You know, one of the coolest things about wet shaving is the history. It's getting an old vintage razor, using it, and adding your blood to the history and the lineage of that razor. So let's give this a go. Good afternoon, wishing enthusiasts and newbies. Welcome to the Rabbit Hole with Cal Shaves. Before we begin, <laughs> sludge up. Oh, this is really good, really smooth. Just picked this up yesterday. Tell them more. Uh, Irish whiskey with an E. About my third drink of it, not today. But uh, I had two last night and uh, really enjoying this. 40%, so 80 proof. And we'll talk about today's cigar afterward. So, today, one of the oldest safety, double edged safeties that I have, and actually one of the first two or three that I ever bought, is this one here. Unscrews from the bottom. that out. Now this one here, the serial number isn't on the barrel, it's on the head, on the bottom plate. Now, I know it's going to be hard to pick up on the camera, so I'll tell you what that says. It is C122649. Now when I first started learning about razors and all that, I have to give a huge thanks to Matt Basarsik and Douglas Smythe. Matt Pasarsik did some videos and between Doug and Matt they've taught me so much of what I know. Um, Matt has a love and a knowledge of all things American Gillettes. So that's basically where I started out at a few years ago. So I think I'm going to use this razor once before. Now we are going to be loading it with a brand new Voskhod. In my Thirsty Badger lather bowl I've already got made up to save some time. Again, Matt Pisarsic, Razor Emporium, his citrus, very inexpensive, vegan base, matching balm, and we are using our Samoog 830 bore hair. It's a very firm soap, so I thought the bore would work great on it. What I, while I'm loading, I'll give you a little bit of details about that razor. It is 1912. It is a total length of three and a quarter inches. And if you keep me see me looking down, I do have notes written down because I have a terribly short memory. It's got a weight of 1.8 ounces. So approximately 52 grams. I did weigh this on a digital kitchen scale beforehand. I know many guys have done this using a vintage uh, rate or a vintage blade. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to go with my go-to, one of my favorite blades. Let's see if this will pick up. And tabs sticking out. Of course, it's the open comb. That's what they had back then. Now this, from what I can understand, and I didn't realize till after the fact. It's probably plated with silver, not nickel. And when I got this, it was originally black with tarnish. And I polished it up possibly with flits. I don't remember exactly, but I kind of flicked it up and took off some of the original silver. So I just let it go back and over the last couple of years, it's patinaed again and tarnished. And I am never going to try and clean this again. So we just got out the shower. We got a lot of growth to go through. Just quickly re-wet. Re-leather. Oh, Matt Pasarsic offers these line of soaps. And very inexpensive. I will list it in the uh, edits. have two or three of the scents. I think he offers about four or five. I've got the citrus and I don't remember what the other one is. Possibly the sample wood. Mm. 
I did use this in a video about a year or so ago, I think. So, should be good to go. Again, what I like about the history of these things is just where have they been? I said, this was made in 1912. Put that in perspective. The Titanic you are. sank in 1912. World War II, or sorry, World War Wooden wooden stuff for another uh, two years. In Canada, women wouldn't get the right to vote for another four years. Sorry, six years. Women didn't get the right to vote in Canada until 1918. This was made in 1912. In the U.S., women didn't get the right to vote until 1920. When at the year that this razor was made, William Taft was the President of the United States. Robert Borden was the Prime Minister of Canada. The United States had a population of approximately 95 million. It's now up to about approximately 327 million. Population of Canada was 2 point, or sorry, 7.2 million. It's now up and around 37 million, so four or five times as many, more than five times. By the way, this I'm finding incredibly aggressive. The teeth on this I find more pronounced than I do on a lot of modern open combs. not what I would call smooth whatsoever. I can definitely feel biting. Definitely not as smooth as today's razors. Something else I've noticed about this is you can see the plates are very, very thin say compared to how about my 41 my McCurr for or sorry Mueller for R41 the plates are very thin but I like the way it shaves it's very nice so that melt through a lot very 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 quickly but again if you don't like blade feel if you don't like the feel of those teeth you're not really going to like that, but it is neat to use. So, but let's go back to the history of 1912. So I just did a quick search online. You guys can do the same thing yourselves. When that razor was made, New Mexico and Arizona became 47th and 48th states of the Union. Alaska would be added as a territory of the United States. Oreo cookies would be introduced in the United States. Girl guides were founded. Uh, let's see what else I wrote down. I think we did. did uh, oh yeah, I forgot Fenway Park. I'm not a, I'm not a sports fanatic, but for those of you that are, Fenway Park opened the same year that this razor was made. We're going to go for pass number two, and we're going to keep talking through this video, but we're going to go with pass number two, across the green. The year that this razor was made, Hitler's longtime companion in, for a brief period, for a very, very brief period before a double suicide, his wife, Eva Braun, was born. 1912. Famous Julia Child was born that year. I'm Julia Child. Bon appetit. Uh, who else have I got written down here? Woody Guthrie and Gene Kelly were born the same year this razor was made. Bram Stoker died that year.
So here we are, 109 years later. Oh, and here's something else I found online, which I'm sure Doug Smythe would love and probably already knows so much more about it, is a meteorite exploded over the town of... I got it written down because I'll forget otherwise. I mean, about 190 kilograms, so a little over 400 pound meteorite exploded over the town of Hallbrook, Arizona. Um, shot raining and a pro an estimated 16,000 pieces of debris over that town. As you can see, we get some weepers on my neck, and I'm not surprised. Again, this razor has, it's not, you know, they've changed a lot between 1912 and even the 1950s when, actually I think my first razor was a 19, the first Gillette I ever, first vintage Gillette I had. I got probably the same week as this one. It turned out to be a 1951. I think I've used it. And the technology has changed. And like I said, this thing, 109 years old. Super efficient, not smooth whatsoever. I can't imagine what you're using an original blade would have been like. We are gonna get ready for pass number three. which will be across the grain. I expect to have some irritation, so I have my Phoenix shaving alum dry dock ready to go. And we are gonna go super, super light on the pressure. Again, I don't have another open comb in here, but the teeth on that are just so much more pointy, more aggressive than on newer open combs. But this is what I love about the hobby. Where has this razor been in the last 109 years, or approximately 107 by the time I got, before it got to me? How many men has it shaved? What has it seen? What has it experienced? For those people that are history buffs, for me, I find that fascinating to think about, to contemplate, and now to add my own blood to the lineage of this razor. And although I don't have children of my own, I do have nephews. Maybe they like to have this someday. Maybe they can keep this razor going and add another 50 years to the history of it. Or if it ends up in a Goodwill shop or a Salvation Army or an antique store someday, someone will pick this up. Now that is what I would call it's a DFS Plus. It's not baby butt smooth, at least not while the whiskers are wet. When the whiskers dry and they go below the skin line, it'll probably be BBS. But, with the whiskers being wet, I'm going to call that a damn fine shave plus, DFS Plus. And again, I am wowed up by the history of it. So, well, you guys, we're going to pause this, wash this all out. And yeah, <laughs> we're definitely going to be needing the alum. So we'll be right back. Thanks. Yeah, hey guys, we're back. Uh, we got it cleaned out. Like I said, you can see the raw spots on my neck. Just a little sting, no big deal. It happens. Since plus, I usually have a lot of growth. And I'm also usually racing to get through it. So, predictably, a fair bit of sting on my neck. Upper lip is good, cheeks are good.
So now we're going to take the matching, the uh, RazorEmporium.com aftershave bomb in the citrus scent. Woo! And this happened before, so I'm not a. Those containers I have a bit of an issue with. So. A lot more than what we needed. Now that feels good. That will help soothe my skin. Again, I don't know why this is so runny. I don't remember it being that runny when I first got it. But again, I really enjoy the history of these. So adding your blood to the lineage, wondering where they've been. I do have got someone like this with the serial number on the plate or on the barrel. Some of them have writing on the collar. 1912. An old fat boy. I didn't check the day code on, or I didn't look it up, but it is an F4, ironically enough. Um, I've got two or three fat boys, I believe. You've got an old, which one's this? This is, you know, gem style. Something like that. You know. So I just recently got this, I haven't even cleaned it up yet. But an old black tip. Another flare. Bowen. You know, something like that. These are all probably from what? Oh, the 1912 through to the Fat Boy being the late 60s. Or sorry, late 50s. Or well, you've got something like this Sheffield. This is not the original scales. The Sheffield might be from the 1800s. I've used that in a video. You've got this, which although it's a new uh, blade, it's repurposed from an old Canadian file that Aliandro made for me. My 8-8 sale. So, taking that piece of nostalgia, that piece of history, and adding yours to it, making it part of yours, and maybe doing some research and find out where that razor, you know, if it was your grandfather's, where it came from. So, again, I just want to show you what that's all about. It's so much fun to do, and it's one of the things I really appreciate about wet shaving. Not always just using the newest, shiniest, hypiest thing that everyone's talking about, but to go back to some of the classics and give them a go. They've worked well for 109 years. Give them a go. So anyway, that's enough of that. That was my C122649 1912 Gillette with a brand new boss cut in it, mowing through a week's worth of growth with ease. I've got modern razors that can't chew it through it that easy. Mind you, it's got some scratch. A lot of guys may not like it. And again, thank you to Matt Pissarsic for encouraging my love of this. You know, again, I cut my teeth on watching Matt Pissarsic, Razor, Razor Emporium, and Matt Pissarsic and Douglas Smythe on I Love to Be Shaping. I learned so much from those guys when I first got into it, so. This is Matt's line of products. I will post links to everything. Matching bomb. Thirsty Badger Lather Bowl. Our 8.30 Samoa. And again, Slancha. Man, that is nice and smooth. There's no alcohol burn to it. All the more, 40%. I think I paid about 40 bucks for a 26 ounce or Canadian. And next, it's going to be time to go for a cigar. I don't know much about this, McAuliffe A. I know the guys on uh, Cigar Talk, which is a podcast I've listened to. They swear by McAuliffe, this is not one of the high end ones. 
coincidentally enough, also out of Arizona, same as Douglas Smythe and Matt Masarsic. I got these from Zeal Cigars, also from Phoenix. So thank you to those guys there. And they also have their own YouTube channel as well. So we got it's kind of wrapping up for this week. I'm gonna go enjoy a cigar. I got some errands to run. I'll go trucking tomorrow. So you guys take care of each other. You guys be safe. Be healthy. We'll see you again in a few days. Bye-bye.